feel better. I'm just going to mm-hmm. move on to other things, <laughs> other problems, other places. Live on YouTube. I got problems on my mother's side. <laughs> got some problems. My father's side, everything's great. Live on Facebook. Where you been? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that song, like, no, I'm not. Well, it does. It sadly reminds me of that song, like, what we gonna do? Like, <laughs> Where you going? Nothing chilling at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> what we gonna do? Sip on some whiskey, like <laughs> get with our friends. You know, you know that song. Like, yes, I remember that song. <laughs> it's like very much like that song. <laughs> How old are you? Yeah. <laughs> and apparently, like all of the all of the uh, priests in the temple were total chads. Good yeah. morning. We the like Catholic the Man Show boy. contains high levels of manliness. It's simple, really. You either want to grow in virtue and holiness, or you want to be a sissy whining baby. Are we on baby. Facebook already? If you choose to move forward, right. grab your whiskey glass, because right. the Catholic Man Show is I starting right He, he did now. say that. I did not hear that. He, he did say that. I do not support that song. <laughs> Welcome to the Catholic Man Show. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side. So raise your glass. Adam Minahan here, sitting with David Niles. Our Seek episode, I was I just got an email today. Our Seek episode aired. So if you uh, nice. haven't subscribed, you can go to, uh, I think, just look in your podcast player, Seek 2023. They're releasing, Seek it out. They're going to be releasing a bunch of different podcasts. Juan, you want to hand me your whiskey glass? Uh, so that was exciting. That's exciting. Hey, guess what else we're going to be doing? Going on Catholic Answers Live. Again. Again. Yes, on December 16th at be 6 p.m. That'll be fun. It's nice having two of us because if they ask really hard A hard question, question is you can always yeah. punt. Well, I did the last one, so yeah. I'll, let, I'll let Adam take this one. Yes. Have they been through all the rounds of all the other Catholic speakers? Yes. Twice? I, more than maybe, that. because maybe it, three times. Yeah, because okay. it's been years since we've been on. But we're going to talk about practical tips. This is what you call scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> well, these guys technically are on Catholic radio. And they're so te- I, they are Catholic, yeah. and they did they, write well, a book. We are Catholic. Yeah. Now, that we are. Mm-hmm. But, like, technically, like, you know, we are on Catholic radio. I feel I we, feel very sure that I am very Catholic. Yes. That doesn't mean, however, that, like, every Catholic belongs <laughs> on, on Catholic every radio. Catholic radio show, you know. We really snuck into the Catholic radio game. We kind of, uh, we barged our way in, I would say. Like, you know what? We're just going to start our own station, and then what are they going to do? <laughs> then they can't sell us no. Right. So, anyway, that'll be exciting. Uh, December 16th, 6 p.m. Central Time. Check um, it out. Second hour. Uh, 888-318-78-TRUTH. You can call in. Mm, that doesn't help anymore because the letters are not on the f- number pads. Oh. You know, like when you go to dial on your phone? It is on an iPhone. It is? I mean, you can t- turn it. You can. There's a setting on an Android. You can turn it on. Mm. So, uh, Catholic, Catholic Man Show first this evening. All right. What is it? We're having a French whiskey. Oh! Yes. Uh, we're having uh, Bryn French Single Malt Whiskey. Mm. It is 40% ABV. The distiller, her name is Allison Park. She was a ballerina and decided to make her own whiskey company, started her own whiskey mm. company, put her whole life savings into it. And here it is, Bryn. They do the... Uh, they call it like grain. Oh, I forget what it's called. Like grain to spirit style, where they they uh, have their own grain in their back of the distillery that they harvest. They have a unique uh, blend of yeast that they use with cognac. It's the, it's the first whiskey ever 
to be aged in virgin French bar- oak barrels and then um, cognac barrels. Okay. Six to eight year. So um, aged. So it doesn't give a, a direct statement, but uh, six to eight year. I'm re- I'm going to be honest. I'm resisting the urge to m- to, to like judge this heavily before I drink it. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I am like why I like because is it you know fr- I'm I'm voicing the fact that I sense prejudice within me. Okay, <laughs> that'd be interesting because we're actually going to talk a little bit about that tonight on the show. Like I just don't expect a lot out of a French whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when you tell me it was founded by a ballerina. Now, that's not a fi- that that second part is not a fair. I, it is fair for me to judge the French. That is fair, okay. But the fact that it was founded by a ballerina also gives me prejudice. That is not fair of me. I'm working on, I'm working on that part of yeah, you need a, of my internal. Uh, you have a hard heart. I think it's going to be a delicious. <laughs> you have a hard heart. <laughs> yeah. I think that it. it it very well may. I have not smelled it. I have not tried it. If I want any ice in my whiskey, I'll just chip it off of your heart because it is ice for cold. It's, it's, the ice is growing. Yeah. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. Cheers to Jesus. <laughs> Cheers. So it's supposed to have a very fruity... Uh, well, I mean, you can... It smells very fruity. Yes. Very, very apple. Apple crisp. Yeah. Yeah. Apple tart. Uh, yeah, very green. It's like green apple... Lemon, lime, even a little orange. Wow. It tastes like it smells. It has a little peppermint taste to it on the it palate. Tastes, yeah, like a lot of fruit, a, a lot little, of sweetness. A creamy on the backside. Mm-hmm. It tastes very good. Wow. That's very interesting. It is... Uh, has this like weird like almost spearmint or peppermint taste it's a little almost bit almost like a dessert whiskey yes uh apple juice type of yeah that's very oh, interesting right, let me look at this it's it's called bren b-r-e-n-n-e bren i like it though what is grace et saveur s-a-v-e-u-r uh f- grace Something with, with grace and love let me see. I don't know. I was guessing there. Savior is obviously not love. Like savior. I was thinking like savior. Like I'll check, but I, th- I think it's somewhere with taste. Savory, maybe. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's it's pretty good. It's all. It was a uh, uh, forty six bucks. Okay. Forty six dollar French single malt whiskey. Okay. Um, it is very desserty. And so, like, if that's what you're going for, there there is definitely a space for this whiskey right here. You know, um, maybe just a digestivo, just like a small pour after dinner. Yeah. Uh, very common in Europe. I, I could get down with that. After dinner whiskey. Yeah, just like you know, not a whole not a whole dram, but I think I would actually like it also with a uh, cigar. Yeah. Because the sweetness and the bitterness of a cigar kind of mm-hmm. complements each other balance it out yeah i'm a fan of it actually i'll tell you i'm a fan i I, I am too it's not something it's not the thing i'm gonna want to drink all the time right no i don't i would only this is a this is like your uh pinch hitter your change of pace Mm -hmm. whiskey Mm -hmm. right here probably better for in the summertime yeah i think so i don't know i think it's fine you're not a seasonal drinker yeah i mean i am a seasonal drinker I enjoy all of I them. I drink every season. In all the seasons, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People hey, are like, you know oh. what? You know what? We're not in the spring. Because of Exodus 90. Exodus90.com. Yeah. Starting January 9th. Join us. But I think it's still spring when Exodus 90 is over. Yeah, April probably. But yeah. Praise still, God. Yeah. <laughs> End of winter, yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's... Uh, we also just, uh, by the time this airs, we'll have released the Catholic Man Show Christmas gift guide. 50 yeah. items, 50 gift items to uh, choose from. We broke it down into several different categories because I was trying to figure out what like the best way to organize it all. And so I was like, let's mm-hmm. just do it this way. We're going to do it for with apparel, 
then we're gonna do gear like gear and gadgets and then we're gonna do consumables and then we're gonna do books and then we're gonna do subscriptions nice yeah so those are I think that's a good way to those do those are the categories in which uh, we picked the items to do to, to suggest so is grace and check flavor. it out look for it grace and flavor grace, grace and, and flavor so all right yeah I yeah. like both of those things. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I also brought the, our book that we're reading currently on uh, our book group. It's Vocation to Virtue, Christian Marriage as a Consecrated Life uh, by Kent Lenoski. He's a... This is when you're doing in the in the Patreon group? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, he is a professor at Wyoming College. We're actually probably going to have him out uh, to give a talk and, and be on the Catholic Man Show next year. Uh, really great guy, really interesting guy. Ten kids, nice. Um, and obviously he lives up in Wyoming. Good round uh, number, ten. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's a really great book. It's a very interesting book. Uh, in like comparing and contrasting, um, the vo the religious life, the celibate life, to the married life, and how you can learn like, each. Uh, state in life you can learn from the other like what it is about uh, the different vocations that you can learn about your own vocation right he makes a uh, he makes a statement in there how um, the holy family is so unique Mary and Joseph in their marriage is so unique because their marriage yielded the end of the um, the marital act that in the married life namely our Lord mm -hmm. uh, a child and then it also um, ended, uh, uh, gave the end to the spiritual life, the consecrated life, yeah. namely salvation to the world. Mm -hmm. So how unique it was that the that Mary and Joseph, in their holy family, um, provided both ends in the married life and the consecrated life. Yeah, it is incredibly beautiful to think about and ponder how they are married, the married vocation and the religious vocation at the same time. Right. Um, and he really draws out uh, the virtues of uh, poverty, chastity, and obedience, which are normally the vows that... Evangelical counsels. Yeah, that, that the uh, religious life takes, uh -huh. and actually how it also applies to uh, the married life as well. Beautiful. He also, Beautiful. You know what? I learned a lot about St. Augustine through this book as well. Uh, I have not taken deep vocation dives. Vocation to virtue. Yeah, Christian called, marriage as a consecrated life. A great book. We've had a great some great conversations. You can join us if you go to patreon.com slash the Catholic Man Show. Excellent. We'll be right back. Dude, some of the things that he has said uh, about... That sounds very interesting. I am interested in that. Uh, some of the things he, he draws out is very interesting, especially about the conjugal act, like the married life. Uh huh. Um, and he pulls off St. Augustine on this, which I did not realize. Um, but apparently, I have not read it, the primary text. Okay. Nor the context. Right. Uh, but Augustine says that in the married life, as you grow in your moral and mature in your moral life within the context of marriage. Yeah. Uh, you uh, cease to basically have the desire for the conjugal act. Hmm. I must not be getting anywhere. <laughs> uh, it becomes uh, less and less desirable. I mean, I think that that... that makes sense and not because just of a biological level he's not, not talking about not, the biological not out level. of a distaste for it but no. simply out of um that you have developed an appetite for a higher good exactly right that's right. exactly right exactly that, that uh the intellectual life and contemplate uh, contemplative life is uh the highest goods mm -hmm. in 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 the moral life and it and once right. you it's, get to it's not that you're um you find it disdaining or right, like yeah. like that you distasteful right right it's, it's not that you're you have oh, a disdain you for have it. an aversion to right it. but that the the lower uh appetites in your life 
are less fulfilling yeah. or, or less. So yeah, think about when you're a kid, you used to love to chew bubble gum. I used to love to drink pop. Right. Right. And do I still think bubble gum and pop are good? Yeah. I just don't desire to do them because, well, I read, you know, like instead of drinking pop, I might have a beer or I might have a whiskey or I might mm -hmm. have something else or, you know, like right. or water. Right. Uh, yeah. Just because I've developed, my appetites have developed right. to, des to desire these things that are, I would think, higher goods. Yeah. The carnal pleasures in life become less and less um, satisfying. Yeah. Even like yeah. food and drink sex well, are they I, I think they're probably equally satisfying however you now thirst for something deeper they still satisfy the way they've always satisfied right they're not less satisfying but you have a deeper thirst for something more you, you, like you thirst, it doesn't quench you thirst your thirst for more as right? much as what yeah but it's not because they don't satisfy as much you know it's not that oh they yeah, yield they yield less of a of Prob a good, probably right? A because the be good made. in them is is as good as they, it was before. But now you know that there's something deeper, mm -hmm. and so it's just not enough for you. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Makes bold. you a little nervous, though. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say. Bold claim, uh, bold move, Augustine. It does like make you feel like, oh, maybe I don't want to grow, you know. But no, you do because Lord, make me chase just not yet. Like think but about. All right, how great these things are, but if there like is something else that's so great that it makes you like not even desire those like these carnal these carnal goods, marital goods, mm -hmm. which are truly good things, right? Um, and he makes that very clear. Yeah, yeah. I mean these these are fantastic, like life changing things. Most people who are married know this, uh, but if you discover something that's so much greater. Like, don't you, if there is something that's so much greater that would make you think, oh, that's not even something I'm attracted to anymore, wouldn't you want to know it? Mm -hmm. You know? I, yeah. Absolutely. And then, but how much is that from his, just his own journey, his own experience, right? Like his conversion from. I'm sure a lot of it. His, well, I think anytime that, think that you he, write. I think that he uh, discovered it. Yeah. I think anytime that you write yeah. something or, you know, it, it comes from your own human experience. But I think that even if you are a celibate, you could still come to an understanding of that just by simply pondering a hierarchy of goods. Right. You know, um, yeah. And, and how man is, his appetite, you know, he's, man is made for God, right? And so Augustine, he really coined that. He like, you know, did the whole city of God. Right. And our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Have you, have you read the confessions? I have. When I read it, I was so disappointed. Because it's like that the that first. That line shows up on the first page. Yeah. It's the first page. Great. Uh, when I read that right off the bat. Were you worried you weren't going to read the rest of it? I didn't read the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> I made it like halfway, you know, and like the fact that that line came so early, I was, I, I was literally saying, well, great. Now you know, I have like, nothing. It's like, what, a, what's going to push me through? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted that to be the last line. Right, I wanted it yeah, to be like three quarters of the way, right? You know, where like it kept me going right. and now I've kind of got a sense of it and I'm into it now and like here it is, you know. Right off the bat. Boom. First page. Literally the first page. Maybe I think the second paragraph, if I recall. I mean it depends maybe how depends on how big your pages are, but Right. On my in my book, it was on the first page. Yeah. All right, let's roll. Uh, do you have anything that you want to talk about? I don't have a gear. Before the topic. Is no, there anything? I don't have a gear. Well, I mean just anything in general that you wanna mm -mm. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan. We got Juan Posada in the his house. We're drinking a little French whiskey today. Bren. Bren. You don't say the E at the end? Mm -hmm. Juan, do you say the E at the end? You don't say it? It's not. I looked it up. No. I looked it up. All right. Just feel like Brené would be a like more French sounding than Bren. You know? The uh, co the color on the label, the the light blue, mm -hmm. is uh, in relationship to the color. It's the same color of the door at the distillery. Interesting. It's also got the fleur de lis on here, which I like. 
right on the bottle. So check it out. Uh, it really is. It really is a unique whiskey. Mm -hmm. I have not had a whiskey like this before. So uh, I was very honest about my prejudice in the beginning, and but I, I like it. Yeah, that's the thing about prejudice. You just have to be honest about it, and it it helps you overcome. Overcome, right? There you go. It does taste like it was made by a, a ballerina, though. It does taste like it was made by a ballerina. That is true. It is. It is definitely. I mean, it is a like feminine whiskey. There, there are a lot of feminine qualities about it. Um, that doesn't mean it's bad. Personally, I love feminine things. <laughs> I have a lot of them at home. <laughs> I have five women at home. Well, girls. Yeah, I have one woman. What one? Some distinction four, need to be made here. Four girls, yeah. right? <laughs> but I love all of them, right? right. I think yeah. they're just great. Yeah. But so anyway, but I, I did think it's a good whiskey. It's worth trying. If you find it, mm -hmm. buy it. I mean, you said it was only 45 bucks, so yeah. you're not looking at, uh, you know, it's not a big... It's not going to break the bank. Right. I want to give a shout out to Leo Thomas, my youngest son. Happy, happy birthday. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Leo. Three years old. This is a crazy, like... Trinitarian birthday. Big uh, deal. The next, I don't know, like two weeks is pretty wild because it's Leo's birthday... Then Jude's birthday, well, Thanksgiving, Jude's birthday. Haley's birthday. And then Haley's birthday. And Molly's birthday, if you want to count that, which is our we dog. Don't, we don't. Our long, one of our longest family traditions is actually forgetting the dog's birthday. That is a great family tradition, I think. <laughs> Every year we forgot, like, Riley's birthday, our old dog. You know who else forgets about the dog's birthday? The dog. The dog has no idea. Right. Yep. So celebrating an animal's birthday is just stupid. It is, all right, like, you cannot think of a way that it's not dumb. They don't care. <laughs> they have no idea they why have, you're getting... Don't even, they don't even know why they're, like, getting a new chew toy or something, all right? Like, I get that you like the dog, and you're happy the dog's in the family, and I think that's great. But the dog doesn't need a birthday. Now, party. You, now, birthday party. Now, let me tell you this. If you want to bake a cake and eat it, you can do that for absolutely any reason in the world. Dude. I just realized something. Huh. We have had a French whiskey. We have. I know. I remember the other one with the it's suit right of there. armor. Yeah. Chivalry. And the, the other the other French As whiskey. I, I was listening, looking at you, and we have it. Oh, yeah, because earlier you said that. Uh, it's uh, our first. It's it first. was not a first for the French whiskey. We had the chivalry, and I don't recommend that one. No. That one, you know what? That one is the reason why I had prejudice against, against this. The, this French whiskey, because the other one was so lame. Yeah, that was bad. It had, like... Oh, you forgot to put flavor in here. <laughs> you just forgot. <laughs> you think you forgot to do something with this, right? Right. Anyway, so uh, that's just how you know what hot take. Hot from David take. Niles, your your animals, very rare. Your this dog's your dog's birthday rare. is stupid. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're gonna talk about uh, Saint Charbel today. Yes. We're gonna talk about uh, five messages from Saint Charbel. Uh, he gave some fantastic homilies. You can go and look those up. They're available online. He is the man of the, of Eastern Rites. Yeah, so he's he's a Maronite. Yeah, so maybe some, some background on St. Charbel because he's not very well known. In fact, if you are uh, looking on a video right now there on is. YouTube, oh. he has... There he is. There he is right there. Boom. St. Charbel. like a weatherman right now. Right, right behind us. Uh, but he became a monk at, 20, uh, at 23... A priest at 31, and then a hermit by 46. That is. I don't think that pretty those. Young. I don't. I don't think that those numbers are outstanding for their time, for his time. A hermit by 46. I don't know. Most of the time, well, most of the time, hermits were older because 46 was old back then. Oh, okay. You know, and like a lot of a lot of a lot and, of guys became monks when they were like 15. Back in the day, I mean, so you know, like. These are the 1800s. Yeah, you know. It's, so he was bro he was born in Lebanon uh, and raised in a devout Catholic family and was one of five children. Uh, born in 1828. Uh, he was known. If you look at even the picture behind us, like you see how he's looking down. Yeah. Uh, almost all the pictures. In fact, I think all of the ones that I've seen, at least, uh, are have him looking down. Because some of his uh, mug brothers said that. No one really saw his face. 
because he was always looking down in humility, whether it be at mass, just walking around, even talking to anybody, he mm-hmm. would be looking, he would never even look somebody in the eyes. Hmm. Okay. That people wouldn't see his face because he was just always looking at. He had the hood on, you know, for the most part, and so people just didn't see his face very Sounds much. Sounds like he'd make a great hermit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, after his death, there there were a lot of like crazy stories about his intercession uh, m- uh, miracles. Yeah. Uh, that were happening around him. Uh, a fellow monk said he saw a light circling Saint, uh, Father Charbel's body. Uh, when he, when he died on Christmas Eve, in in front of, in front of the presence of the Holy Eucharist, that's where I want to die. Yeah, I know. In that, it'd be it, so sweet. And then amazing, like in the presence of the Holy Eucharist. That's where I want to die. How do you feel about? If you, but I mean, the truth is, if you're not in the front of the whole, the Blessed Sacrament when you die, you're about to be. So, you know. How do you feel about having your body uh, after you die, having your body? in front of the blessed sacrament before your funeral. I love it because I think it um, sends a statement and it uh, honors our Lord in the blessed sacrament. Um, I only love it if it is to honor the Lord in the blessed sacrament. Um, I think that you could also do that out of like pride or selfishness. Like, oh, well, I want my body to be in front of Jesus, right? Because it's, I want all the stuff, you know, like. Okay. So I, I support all those sorts of things in as much as they glorify the Lord. If they don't, then I'm not. I know I'm, I'm out. I think that's a good answer. I can't really combat that. Yeah. <laughs> can't really go against any of that. But yes, I mean, uh, you know, the the good deacon at our church. Um, that was mm-hmm. one of the requests. Mm-hmm. It was the first him. time I'd ever seen or me, heard me about too. it. Oh, me too. And it was, um, I thought, a really beautiful thing. Uh, it, it. If I have the opportunity to do that, I don't know. Like, can anybody just request that? I'm sure I mean, you can request you, you it. You can request it. I mean, yeah. I mean, just just throw it out there, right? You know, like say, "Hey, I want it," and see what and happens. Hopefully, they do it. If they don't, you can still want it, and you like desire the fact, it. That, the fact that you desired it is probably it, good enough. You right. know, yeah. So interesting take. Mm-hmm. I liked it because it's not your fault, right? Th- then it's on. It. Th- then it's on the the person who's above you. And let's authority. also remember that you're not there anymore. Right, it's just your it's body. It's just your remains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that um, you are before the Lord. You know, like, you know, you're Support receiving like either being the last being, things now. Yeah, judgment, heaven, heaven hell, hell, purgatory, death, judgment, heaven, hell. Yeah. So, um, it's a it's a really great it's a really great thing I think to honor honor our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Mm-hmm. Um, people should it's consider even, it uh it's even better if you're still alive yeah so no i think like spending your last hours in front of the blessed sacrament that's that is very powerful mm-hmm. i'm Have not you, sure that like i don't think that you get any grace from having your body and you know like the, your remains in front of the blessed sacrament i think no because you, you can't grace. have any more grace like you, you don't you can't earn any more grace. Well, like or you, merit you any more could, grace like, is get, better. I don't know if you're in purgatory. Like you know, stuff that happens on Earth can affect you. I think I think the the best thing to do would be because there's going to be other people there as well praying for your body, yeah, or for, for, your, for, for your for your soul. For, for your soul, and so for your person, for your yeah. So the people who are there praying uh, in front of the Blessed Sacrament with your body there, you know, before before your funeral. That would be the most efficacious thing that could possibly take place, I think, yeah. in that scenario. I also want to set aside a retirement fund for the Gregorian masses to be said. Mm, that's a good idea. I like that as well. I'm not sure how much each one costs. I'm sure there's some inflation, so be ready, <laughs> be ready to plan for that. <laughs> uh, another thing was that he, uh, there was a, a light that illuminated his tomb. So he's put in a tomb. Light illuminated his tomb. Uh, his body was exhumed multiple times, com- uh, com- completely incorrupt. Completely, he was like, yeah, one of the like top notch incorrupt. And in fact, his body was um, he was in underwater. His like when the when they dug him up, I one did not time, realize that. Yeah, like it was full of water, uh, just wow. from like the high water table. And so huh. it was the it was I did not know that it was the sort of situation where. A body should be like in 
you know, it, it's, it's not going to survive. It's not, I mean, you know, it's just soaking wet. Mm -hmm. And it was just fine. It looked like he was just sleeping, you know. Now, there is a, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a difference in, in spelling, but it's the same guy. You know, C-H-A-R-B-E-L and then S-H. Oh, really? Yes. I did not know that. Same guy. Um, so don't, if you're looking him up, don't, don't get confused or don't, you know, worry that you're looking at somebody People else. People spell my name differently. Sometimes it's D-A-V-I-D. Sometimes it's D-A-V-E. They do that. They do. It's pronounced differently. That's true. That's, that's the difference. <laughs> All right. Good distinction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... So when we get back, we're going to talk about five messages that he that he left. Uh, these are St. Charbel's words. Uh, if we have time, also, he, he talked briefly about how to keep uh, the demons away from your children, which is very interesting I would well. like to know those, too. Yeah, I need, All right, so, I need uh, those. That'll probably be on the, uh, on the you, podcast. I need you to give those to me before we leave. All right, we'll be right back. So I'm going to need your commentary, though, uh, on these. Adam, you know I got it. Right. Well, sometimes I'll, I'll I'll throw a point on there, and you're like, "Yep, I agree." It's like, yeah. "Well, I was hoping that you would have something else to say." Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. 50, 50. Yeah. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. This week is probably the last week that you could join patreon.com slash the Catholic Man Show, become a patron, and receive the annual Catholic Man Show Christmas cookies. Oh, you better sign up. You have to be at least $10 a month. Beautiful, we got, beautiful cookies. Cause we, because we also have to, like, so we'll lose money for the first couple months. Yeah. I don't know um, if... I haven't seen the what the cookies will look like this year. I know. You have. Are, are we going to have the truck with the Christmas tree in the no. back? No. New new designs. Huh? New. Yes. That one was my favorite. I liked that one. We did that for several years. Uh, uh, we're probably still going to have the Catholic Man Show logo cookie. Correct. If I had to guess. Correct. Other one's going to be actually uh, St. Thomas, Thomas Aquinas. Oh. I just told everybody. All right. So. Um, so much for the surprise. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we also... Hey, guys. We... Uh, off air, we need to talk about getting a Christmas card put together with our families. Juan, I, I put you in charge of this. Where's Jim? Yeah, well, he's he's gone. Okay, so we're going to talk about five messages from St. Charbel. He is known for uh, some phenomenal homilies and writings, um, but he he's somebody pulled uh, on, let's see, this is called... Uh, words of St. Charbel, Christ in the Truth of Love Incarnate. If you Google that, you will find uh, this document that somebody put together that kind of breaks down some of the um, topics that he gave on, in different homilies and writings and letters um, and kind of organized it into different topics and things like that. Mm. It's, it's a nice little, it's only 20 pages. It's a nice little uh, read. Nice. So, uh, straight to the point. Right. Very. Uh, palatable meat, very meat very heavy. practical yeah yeah um so one thing he's talking and he, so he's talking about uh, different messages in order to 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 grow in holiness right in in order to 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 grow in humility um i mean like there is really nothing else that matters other than that right growing in holiness is literally the only thing that matters uh he he says uh, and this is something I think I've heard either St. Therese of Lisieux or somebody, or maybe Avila, um, say this, but he also kind of adopted this idea that the full thimble and the full pot are alike. If you are a pot or a thimble, the most important thing is that you are full. So always try to be full, whatever your size may be, in regards to, you know, obviously grace and, and holiness. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. um, So the first thing he says, though, is is don't, now remember, he's writing this in the 1800s. Every right. time stuff stuff like this happens, it makes it seem like, oh yeah, you wrote that about today, like, right? So he's writing this with all the Facebook and the modern distractions. You know, it's right. like, how bad could it have possibly been in the 1800s? And that makes me think, how bad is it now? <laughs> it might be way worse. Like I, I am just probably completely blind to how bad things really are. 
Mm-hmm. Makes me nervous. <laughs> Should be. Luckily, if I am actually completely blind. You won't be culpable for Right. It. Like, I feel like the Lord is going to... Have some mercy. Yeah. He, I mean, he's got a lot of that, so... Endless. Infinite. I feel like he could... Yeah. You know. So the first thing he says is, don't be distracted by outside things. He says, the things around you, before you and behind you, are less valuable than the things inside of you. Mainly truth, contemplation, mm-hmm. goodness, be the transcendentals. Wouldn't it be funny... This guy is a hermit. I don't know if he was writing this when, like, in the hermit phase of his life or not. But for to ask a hermit to list all of the stuff that I have in my life, like I'm gonna go to Saint Charbel and be like, "Hey, Sharb, bro, Sharb, I want you to list all of the stuff I have in my life, and I want you to put them in two columns. Is this an outside thing, or is this an inside thing? <laughs> How many of the stuff?" That I have, that I think are like, oh yeah, no, this is this is not an outside thing. Can I get a Venn diagram? Right, like how many, <laughs> of, how many of my things, how much of my stuff, in like whatever it is in my life, those facets, how many of them fall into the not outside category? Because right. I feel like it's basic. All of them are. <laughs> yeah. So he says the truth always arises while the world collapses. Very apropos for right now, it feels like. But uh, he says the world never gives you. Uh, get, never gives to you, but always puts you in debt. God alone gives. Mm. And then he says, this is, this is very interesting. He says, you cannot lift people higher than you. You cannot, you cannot go up and draw, uh, you, you can go up and then draw them up to you, mm-hmm. but you cannot lift them higher than you. You cannot give what you do not have. Right, exactly. I mean, that's just another we way of saying that. that. A lot. I feel like we say that a lot. Uh, I think we do too, but... Um, it's just a different way of saying it, a different way to, to think which about is, it. Which is, once again, why pursuing holiness is the most important thing, right? And because if you are pursuing, pursuing holiness, all other things will fall into place. Mm-hmm. You know, um, seek first the kingdom of God, and all other things will be added unto you. Did if you just I had make to, that if up? If I had to, like, summarize it. Did you just make that yeah, up? Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking, like, if I just was going to summarize that concept... Just in my own words, mm-hmm. that's how I would do it. Yeah, so, yeah, I agree. So he says also Christ ri- uh, raises you when he was lifted up mm. on the cross. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you raise up your brothers. By going, like, doing doing it the way he did it. Mm-hmm. And then he said, and when you are raised, and then you will be raised through the power of Christ. So take up your cross and follow him daily. Yeah. But like that, not don't be distracted with outside things. How many times in my life have I thought, you know, I catch I catch myself getting worked up about something. And this is very helpful in these moments. This has helped me a lot. Where I've thought, at my judgment, how much is this going to matter? Mm-hmm. You know, because once again, it's like oh, something a politician has said or done or something. You know, it's like. What this other person a, said, yeah, or even a priest, or something said, right? Who yeah, said something, and you're like, yeah, what? sure, yeah, even a priest, um, or a friend, you know, like at my judgment, that is not going to, you know, it doesn't even play into the equation. Mm-hmm. The things that other people do, I'm not going to be judged in the things that other people do, and at, at the end of the day, they don't matter. Like mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm living my own life. I can only control my own self, mm-hmm. and. And so, like, when I when I get into those moods, very often, by God's grace, I am rem- I remember that. Mm-hmm. And it is very helpful, like, oh, yeah, these th- outside things, they are distractions. And the devil absolutely uses them mm-hmm. to weigh us down, to, like, like, bring us down, to have us thinking and can, like, mulling and just really, like, our, like, all of a sudden, our whole reality is just caught up in these base lower things instead of um the higher higher things that we should be you know entertaining mm-hmm. like let letting our um imagination dwell on those higher things that's right that that's a that's a Cause uh, our, our imagination is a big that's exactly right as adults i think we write off ima- our imagination so much mm-hmm. we think about oh that's for that's for kids uh, and certainly being a child and your imagination plays a big role but it doesn't go away as an adult. It, it changes to something else. Mm-hmm. And so we need to make sure that we are, uh, you know, 
driving our imaginations in holy and good good directions. Yeah, I was talking to Jason Craig uh, a few days ago, and he's the guy who does uh, those. He has uh, Fraternus uh, and uh, those Catholic men. He has a magazine yeah, yeah, called yeah. Sword and Spade. Yeah, I was talking to him on the phone. I said, "Hey, man, I know that you're busy." And he stopped me. and said, "No, no, no, please, Lord, don't make me busy. I don't want to be a busy man. I want to be a leisure leisurely man. Uh-huh. Like I don't want to, to have everything outside me get get me caught up to being busy." Right. Uh, I think that that is something that I like when he said that it kind of like took me back for a second. And I realized, wow, that was kind of impactful for me because I feel like that I'm always busy. I'm, it's like, how have you been? Good. I've been busy. It's like, well, everybody's like, quote unquote, busy. You do you're, you're, you're living, you know, so you're doing things, yeah, uh, which is a good thing. But I think in order to avoid being distracted by the outside things, you have to uh, be focused like on the here and now. Like Saint, uh, Mother Angelica, I almost said Saint, she probably is, but not canonized, but Mother Angelica. I hope she'll be canonized. I do too, someday. Yeah. It'll be, we'll I, probably be dead and I, gone. I personally believe that she's in heaven, you know. Right. Um, but she was so good at being able to just live in the moment mm-hmm. and not be distracted by outside things. Here, here she's, she's, you know, a cloistered nun who's running a, a TV station and a, a, or a TV network and a radio network and all the battles that she had to fight with, with different people. Some in the church. Some in the church. Uh, and then, but still was able to just be present. I think, like, I think not being distracted by outside things, uh, The in order to do that, you have to be, to learn and to train yourself to be present in the moment. Yeah, just to live in the in the right now. I mean, it's kind of cliche. People talk about, oh, live in the moment. Right. Um, but really, it actually is, it's, first of all, it's very challenging. It's very hard to do to not be distracted about the future, right? Because there is a, like, you, we need to be prepared. We need to do some planning, right? Sure. Um, but just, but evangelization happens in the right here and now. Absolutely. This is why, like, St. John so Paul does virtue. Say, right. I mean, everything happens right now. Nothing happens tomorrow. Right. Um, so, like, you just catch yourself, like, the, those moments passing you by. Like, with my kids, you know, you realize, oh, I was like so worried about this thing tomorrow trying to get ready for it or whatever that I missed a really beautiful moment right here and you can't get it back. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I'm really trying to, to change this theme of my mind frame that even though I have a lot of things going on mm-hmm. that I'm not, uh, that I'm not like thinking of myself as busy. It takes trust in the Lord. You mm-hmm. really, I mean, that's the, that's the only way that I can, uh, feel comfortable kind yeah. of uh, you know you just say hey these things I like going through that we just moved right and there was there's still there were a lot of things that, and there were are still a lot of things it's like I'm kind of worried about you know like mm. how is this going to work out what are you we also had do? a newborn we have a newborn baby you know we were traveling to Ireland and like I really just had to say like Lord I, I discerned this I felt like you called me to it I know that you're going to take care of it and that's enough for me Lord like like, I can rest in that. Mm-hmm. You still have to do the work. You still have to do the work. But I'm not going to worry about the things for tomorrow. Right. I'll do them when they come. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep going on the other side of the break. Talking about the five, uh, five messages that St. Jar- Charbel gave us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan and Juan Posada. We're talking about some of the five things that St. Charbel gave us. He said a lot of things. These are five of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one was don't be distracted with outside things. Next one is uh, do not sell your soul in markets of this world. Yeah, I don't know exactly what that means, but I, uh, yes, do not sell your soul. In markets of this world or any other world, don't sell your soul because it's a bad idea. Yeah, you, so it, I am on board with this no matter what it is he's, he means by that. I think what he means by that is, uh, I think what he means by that is, is putting things above 
honoring our Lord, you know, yeah. striving for, for the kingdom of God. moral God. principles in order to get ahead in life. Right. So he says, he says, your soul is very valuable. Whatever the value and pros and cons that the world pays for to you, it remains cheap and lower compared to their true value. Do not sell your souls because the world cannot pay, repay you the price because the, their price is the blood of Christ fully paid on the cross. Right. Even if you were offered everything right. in the entire universe, it would not be enough. It's not right. worth, your soul is infinitely more valuable because it, it's given an infinite value by God. You're made in his image. You are the only thing made in his image. There is nothing else in the world made in the image and likeness of the creator. And so nothing else is worthy of you other than the creator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so whether that be power, money, I mean, whatever it is. Yeah, and the thing is, whatever it is, all of those things that you desire in this world, in this life, will be given to you uh, a hundredfold in the next, more than you could ever attain in this. You know, power, knowledge, wealth. Mm -hmm. I mean, like whatever wealth means. Um, wealth is really just a, another form of power, mm -hmm. right? Um You'd be given, the, and ultimately, power comes down to freedom. You'll be given, the, you'll be given true freedom in the next, right? That you have power so that you can, your will, you can exert your will as you as you see fit, right? Right. Um, right. And, and, but in the next world, that will be true, infinitely, right? right? I mean, to the way, to the extent that you were made for it to be, right? So. Yeah, I, I think that's just a, a good point to make because you have to have a, an ordered life, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, you should be uh, striving to do the best you can in work and and you know in every all your extracurricular activities. But your your main vocation is you know either the married life or whatever your vocation yeah, is. It's holiness, it's, and it, and it, right. it takes different avenues. Now, the flip right. side to this, like you kind of mentioned, is that we should still strive to be successful in this life that um, we should strive to be, like, do do everything as well as we can. That's right, yes. We, no, when I say successful, I don't mean you should, we're not striving to be rich. Right. Uh, but but you should strive. Although, like, I mean, that's why we started the radio station. I mean, that is what I'm trying to do. I right. mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that's what other people do. I don't want everyone to try it, because then it won't work for me. Right. <laughs> but, um, I mean, let me tell you, because Catholic Radio, that's where the money is. I don't know if you guys know this. <laughs> But, like, you should be as good at your job as you can be. Right. Not because you think it, not out of selfish reasons, but simply because, like, it's it's the right thing to do. Yes. You know, um, assuming that your job is um, involves moral activity, right? Like, mm -hmm. th there are some jobs, sales, for instance. You can try to rip somebody off. That's to make not, this sale. That's not what I'm talking about. That doesn't make you good at your job because you rip right. people off, right? So. Right. You just have to know what I mean. Right. Uh, the next one I think is, is uh, hard. Um, okay. Also, I feel like that you're going to... I like how it starts with the word beware. I think I think this is going to cut you a little deep. All right, I'm ready. All right. Beware. Do not condemn. Do not put on your uh, in your mind preconceived ideas and judgments about anyone. Prejudices mm. are <laughs> colored lenses you put on your eyes through which... You see each person with the colored lens and not with their true color of the person. And you didn't read it. It, even, it says even the French. I cannot believe that. <laughs> he said that. Even the French. St. Charbel said even the French. <laughs> I um, actually have nothing against the French. Uh, you know, except that... Uh, yeah, like, but how, how, how much uh, better off would our church be if, if we... They make terrible whiskey. All right, that's it. <laughs> except for this one. This one's not bad. Yeah. Uh, but how better off would our church be is if we all took into consideration the, the members of our church, we look at them in the best possible light. Yeah. You know what? Um, it's a... And give them the, the benefits of the doubt. And it's a like, huge phenomenon right now. And it's worldwide, the division. Mm -hmm. I feel like the world is so divided. Uh, uh, like the political line, you know, like, oh, here's... Here's my party. This is your party. 
you know, it, it was like, we're not, a, we're not Americans anymore. It's like, oh, I'm an American Republican or I'm an American Democrat or I'm an American, indep- you know, like whatever, fill in the blank. Um, the identity politics has really starting to take, take root. And it's like, I just feel like we have, we're becoming more, um, we're condemning people, you know, simply because they're different now more than ever. And maybe it's not more than ever, and it just feels like it. Uh, but I think actually it is. I think I'm, we actually are more divisive now than we were in the past. It's very hard, though, when you, you know, it's hard. It's hard to love your enemy, right? It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to to will the good of somebody that is either um, you know that is talking behind your back or that has said things that is incorrect that will not, they won't repent for them or they won't like take that back or they won't do sure. like, they won't like, it's hard when you find out that somebody that you, you know, and very well, uh, is talking behind your back, yeah. you know, and it's hard to, uh, not give them benefits of the doubt in fu- in future circumstances. Yeah. It's also hard when you can hate bad ideas. Okay. Um, we can judge very harshly and should bad ideas. But in a world where, once again, we're playing identity politics, people now associate themselves with the idea. Like, oh, it's not just an idea that they have. No, they are that idea, right? Like, uh, no, I am. this. That's my identity, mm. right? Like, with a lifestyle. That's That's who I am. I am this lifestyle, or I am this choice that I've made. Um it's like, well, no, that's a, no, I reject and judge that. That's a bad choice. That's a bad idea. It's a bad action. It's a right. bad lifestyle. Not all ideas deserve respect. No, they don't. Some of them, some of them are are evil and and right. need to be condemned. Right. For the sake of the people who have made those choices or those lifestyles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it just is hard now because they're on the other side saying, no, you're you're throwing those arrows at me and. You might not be wanting to, but like they're standing in the way of the arrows you're throwing at this idea or mm-hmm. this life. It's just a challenge. It takes it takes incredible prudence, you know, to be able to speak when yeah, and you're right. But it also takes on the flip side. It's the other uh, the other side are the people pleasers, mm-hmm. the people who like I don't care what it is. I just want I don't want to, I don't want a confrontation. I I want to avoid confrontation at all cost. Uh, and so whatever that, you know, whatever, however we can achieve that end, I will just agree with so we can move on. Those are, those people are the lukewarm of ideas. Right. And so they need, like, the other side of that is that you need to have fortitude to stand up for what, like, what do you believe? Yeah. I agree. It's, it really is a challenge. We need charity more than ever. Um, we need the truth spoken in charity, which is, like, it's difficult because there's not a lot of people out there doing it for you to get, like, to get behind, to get good examples from, right? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We, we need people who are willing to, like, do that and, and who have the grace and gift to do it. It mm-hmm. is a gift, but those people need to do it so that the rest of us can see how it's done. Yeah. The next one, he says, this kind of, I, I, it, it flows very well here um, with each other, but Next one says, when you make a mistake, admit it. Prof- profess your misdeeds, confess it, and correct as much as you can. Acknowledge the error and correcting it make you, makes you uh, great and, and it does not put you down. So correct what you can fix and the rest when you confess it to God. And he will recover what you aren't able to fix and the offset what you aren't able to restore. And this is something that... Yeah, uh, it's hard to do, to do as well because, do. like, when you realize and you you come to the like you you have the re- realization that oh I've made a mistake, mm-hmm. uh, and it's hard to be able to say like oh I I need to go admit it right now like in front like front of people or you know to to get this either sin or this mistake whatever it is out in the open. Uh, a lot of times, like even in the business world, when something went wrong or I made a mistake or something happened. The first thing I would do is when I would call them is, is kind of have my hat in my hand and just say, hey, man, uh, I made a mistake. Here's the mistake. And then I always try my best in that process to make sure that I have some sort of a solution. So I have a, a, right. an option. Yeah, prudently have a ha, try to have a resolution to right. your mistake. But yeah, you're right. That's exactly what I was thinking about is the business world. You know, I've made mistakes with clients and there's this temptation to try to oh, ignore it or pretend or downplay it as if like, 
oh, it was like really the kind of the circumstances, whatever. Right. Sorry, we know. had a glitch or, right. you know, or like miscommunication. Somebody else told me something, you know, whatever. Um, because you think, oh, I can actually avoid all of the conflict here, you know. Right. And we'll just, Again, a we'll lack just of move, fortitude. We'll move on. And you think that's the best um, resolution to this. No, it actually isn't. The best resolution is to, once again, it kind of does take faith in God because sometimes you might think, if I go and admit that, I can, it might be a mistake that you realize, let's just say your client will have no idea. He'll, they'll never know. And so he's like, oh, I'm just not going to say anything. But actually, no, it's better in the grand economy of grace. The world will be better. You will be better as a person mm-hmm. if you just immediately own up to it and, and trust in God that, hey, I might lose the client, but I'll get, I'll get something better in return. That's right. Virtue. That's right. We've run out of time on the radio. Go check us out on the thecatholicmanshow.com. We've been talking about five messages from St. Charbel. Don't be distracted about the outside world. Do not sell your soul to the markets of the world. Do not condemn or have preconceived notions or judgments on others. And admit mistakes and go and confess it. Advent is coming up. Uh, make sure you go to confession, go to with, confession. Your fam- with your family before Christmas. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. And cheers to Jesus. Well, we okay. got through them all. We got almost four out of five. Oh wait, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, is, three, yeah. four. So we got one more. Man, all right. There at the end, when you were listing them all, it seemed like oh, that was a lot of things. I think we got them all. We well, get close. Right. Okay, so what's number five? Uh, number five is the word in your mouth is like a stone in a sling. Once you release it, it won't be. You won't be able to take it back. Mm. So many people, so many saints talk about this. Um, and the Bible talks about it, that, you know, uh, a man's words is like the bit in a horse's mouth, you know, that um, the whole body, if you control, if you can control your language, you can control the rest of your body. If you can control your tongue, you can control the rest of your body, that this is like something that y- you can guide and change a person just by changing their language. Mm-hmm. There, there's even a Very powerful. virtue about wanting to speak less. Well, I forget what the name of it was. Which is like holding you 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 having the awareness of saying like I am speaking too much right now. I don't need to be saying this many words. Mm, that does I sound familiar. Oh I forget. I'll check it out. Uh but but that has to do with self awareness. Right? I think a lot of times uh you have to be self you need to be self aware uh and, and be able to take in and, and this is harder for some people and easier for for others, right? Is that you're in a su- situation and surrounding? Oh, but it's very hard. It's very hard to not say something when you want to say it. Y- oh, yes, absolutely. You know, especially if it's a rock like he's talking about, mm-hmm. uh, because chances are, you know, you have reason to be angry or you have reason to defend yourself or whatever. And I am always, I have seen. Um, you told me example about a coworker of yours, you know not too long ago who held held their tongue you know like i'm always incredibly impressed in those moments where i see somebody not defend themselves when they've been unjustly accused of something minor or big you know like it 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 doesn't necessarily make it easier when you're accused of doing something that's small versus something that's big like if you're if, if i get accused of it's like no i didn't do that you know um, it's just I'm always very impressed by those people who have that ability to just keep their mouth shut and like accept the critic criticism anyway with charity. Mm-hmm. Well, and like because you know what I can't. You know what that's what Christ did. Yeah, right. He did. Pontius Pilate asked him. He said like you know give your defense. You know what what say you? Yeah. Are you the king of the Jews? These these guys over here are telling me the kings of the king, you're the king of the Jews. I can have you killed scourged i can i can do whatever i want to mm-hmm. you right now and it, he did he did eventually say that you know to them but only when kind of at the end when he, he needed to you know for the sake of everyone you but know, he was you he, you will see me on the you know coming on the power of glory right but at the beginning he, Some, did, he said he, it was something like that. <laughs> he didn't he didn't uh he didn't defend himself right and he just stood there quietly that is incredibly hard yeah it, no it is I say I can't do it. I, I can't, I'm capable of it with God's grace, but I just really struggle. Right. Because it's like, it's an injustice on me. Right. 
the litany of humility is is a prayer that uh, continually. And it's another one of those things that you need great prudence to really discern the situation. Because sometimes, in charity for the person who's maybe accusing you, mm -hmm. you need to tell them, you know, like, you know, for the, for their sake, you know, just so that you don't accidentally, you know, like, you don't carry on accusing me of something I didn't do. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because think about how terrible they would feel later if you let them keep going, you know, and then they might say, like, why didn't you tell me you just let me keep going and, like, carry on as if you ha you were guilty of that and you weren't the whole time? All you had to do is tell me, you know, so, like, there are situations where you need to, s it just takes great prudence um, yeah. and, and wisdom. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. the wisdom to know the difference between those situations. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you, if you like go through those situations with good intentions, the Lord will reward your, will reward that. Um, even if you don't choose well all the time. Yeah. And this is the, this is the importance of, of growing in virtue, right? Is because yeah. the more you grow in, in, in specific virtues, the more you uh, become more accord in accord with reality, the more you you grow in all your all virtues, and you're able to see reality right, yeah. as it is, uh -huh. as it truly is. And so, the more you grow in virtues that are maybe even easier for you, so to speak, the easier it is going to be to continue growing in virtues in all in all the virtues. The way I think to discern that line is by you have to just remove yourself from the situation. So you need to develop a distrust of self, mm -hmm. right? Hard to do also because emotions are, are, are always evolved. If you're, if you're a high emotional person, mm -hmm. this is even going to be yeah. harder for oh, you. Yeah, big time. But if you do distrust yourself where, you know, like, oh, someone comes and accuses you of something and your first thought is, wow, maybe I did that and I didn't even realize, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I, I yeah. You know, um, then it allows you to, because you're out of the equation, you can now more easily mm -hmm. discern do I need to be charitable to this person? I'm going to be charitable to this person. Is that charity going to come in the form of my silence or in my like rescuing them from continuing down a bad path, right? Because I'm not in this equation anymore, even though I'm the one being accused. Like, I'm just going to be charitable to them. Mm -hmm. What's that going to look like? The more you are involved, like the more you bring, drag yourself and your own pride and ego into it, just the cloudier it's going to get. Yeah. And this is the importance also of having friends you can trust. Right. Sure. If you, if you're going to like, there's been many of times where I have played out the situation in my head and I've thought I'm removing myself from this situation. Uh, you, you know, I'm going to play this out. How should I respond? How should I do this? And I, I come to the conclusion and then I come to you. Uh, and I say, like, here's the situation. Here's how I'm going to respond. What say you? Mm -hmm. And then you would then inevitably there have been times where you've come up and been like, no, you should respond this way. And I'll be and, and like, I'll listen to you. And then I'll be like, man, I spent a long time discerning this. Mm -hmm. And I thought that this is the this sure. was the right way to go. Yeah, I've done that, too. And uh I was so blinded by this, by this, I didn't even, I was not even aware I was blind by it. And because I had somebody who, you know, I had a friend that was willing to say what, what he thought, regardless of what I wanted to hear. Well, Adam, also very possible that I was, that I was wrong. <laughs> well, no, I mean, but it sheds, no, it sheds more light on the situation sure, yeah, it in a different perspective. Certainly when you can, when you can get good opinions. Right. From people. Yeah, you totally, you totally you ruined my life. Uh, I, <laughs> I put all my money in Bitcoin right. at seven seventy thousand dollars. You told me it was going to two fifty. Yeah, like the people on television said. Um. Anyway, there's uh. Do you want to? Do you want to? Well, how far along are we, Juan? We're. Okay. So I mean, do we make the other ones a new episode? Like their own episode? Are they Are they enough for an episode? I wasn't gonna make it another episode. Okay. Because, you know, if it's another five things, we could probably make it another episode. Well, it is a few, yeah. Why don't we just do that? Okay. Why don't we tease the first one? And then and then we'll pick up. Yeah. And then we can do it again when we do the episode. And Some of these, some of this is, uh, 
in, like very self-explanatory. You know, something like okay. common sense, but yeah. but uh, sometimes you, we need. We can to. talk about the why behind it, though. Uh, yeah. So he says the the first thing. This is now how to guard your family and to keep them from the schemes of the evil one uh, through the presence of God in them. Can I guess at one of them? Sure. Is one of them remain yourself in a state of grace? Because I, I believe that if you want to protect your family, especially as the father, if you are not remaining in a state of grace, then your ability to to stand in the way, to stand in the breach, so to speak, mm -hmm. between the evil one and your family is gone. If you are not in a state of grace, you have no ability to provide spiritual protection. Uh, it's not directly, uh -huh. but but indirectly, yes. I mean, the, the, so, but you're exactly right. Like, the the moral life, like to grow and mature in the moral life, means that we have you have to uh, uh, present yourself in all avenues possible to receive grace. Mm -hmm. And when you fall in in and sever yourself from the, the your relationship and friendship with God through mortal sin, you need to immediately go rectify it as soon as possible. Confess your sins through through confession. Sure. Um, and as as often as as you fall into mortal sin is as often as you should go to confession, right? It's at least as often as yeah. you should go to confession. Right. I mean, we should all we should all be going. You know, th there's this weird stigma. I was talking to actually Bishop Conroll about this uh, today because we we're, were going through talking about different things we're going to talk about on on my other super famous super famous podcast. Catholic yeah. Podcast, yeah. Yeah. Tulsa Tulsa time with Bishop David Conroll. I hear that's the one you're getting rich on, and I'm super upset about it. I am banking, bro. Yeah. Um. But we were talking about I'm upset. This this statement, the the kind of other side of the Advent penitential right and the Lent penitential right yeah. that we have, uh -huh. it it's a good thing, but it also sometimes says tells the people who maybe not be not are not practicing their Catholic faith or maybe they're kind of just going through the motions. You only need to go to confession twice a year. Right. Yeah. This is a check, a, a box checking like, event. Like, make right. sure you do this. You know, and like, this is just not the case. Like, or even that, like that. The, there's the, not a re that you don't need to still go to confession again in Lent or again in Advent. Right. You know that, that the church requires you by canon law to go twice a year, only mm -hmm. if you need to. Uh, only if you. Yeah. Only if. You, ooh, I, no, I don't know. No, it's it's only once a year, and only if you need you you're confi required to confess your mortal sins. At least once a year. Hmm. Now, if you don't you know have, what? if I, you don't have mortal sin, then the, you are not required to go to confession by canon law. Okay, I will uh, retract that statement then. Yeah, that was my understanding, but maybe it's that's a, not the a, case. It is a, a nuance of the of the law, but it is commonly portrayed as you're required to go. Like people often say that mm -hmm. you're actually not required to go. You're required to f confess all mortal sin. At least once a year, by canon law. Okay. You know what? I made a mistake, <laughs> and I am admitting it and confessing it. That's and just I am because, so it's sorry. Just like your holiness on display. It's Look a, at that. Adam. It's a. You're. Wasn't. You know what? You're actually glowing. <laughs> uh, but but I think we should uh, get in the habit of going to confession at least once a month. At least. At least once a month. You know, um, on our pilgrimage, we were talking to Father Sean Donovan, and he was. He was telling us how, like, he he really recommends once a week, mm -hmm. um, and that once a month is, you know, good. It's, um, but honestly, it's kind of a bare minimum. You know, the whole once a month thing. I think we just got to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, like, do we want to grow in holiness? That's exactly right. Do you want to be holy or not? Right. Okay. Because if you do, it's it's not going to happen on accident. Right. You're not going to get there, um, like you're not going to like kind of stumble into it. Right. Okay. It's going to be hard. Holiness. Holiness is not for the weak. Right. Christ is the king of the world, but he is not a fascist dictator and he will not force you. Right. He has set the laws for you to follow mm -hmm. and abide as the king of the universe. And you can choose to uh, abide by them or not right. abide by them. And I say holiness is not for the weak. That's a height. It's, that's an analogy. Obviously, it's we're all weak. It's not by our own strength that we attain any holiness. Right. Obviously. Um, it's the Lord is the strength by which we will do anything good in this life. Um, but it will, it will require dedication. It will require sacrifice of you. Mm -hmm. It will be hard. 
So if you want to be holy, decide. Mm-hmm. If you don't, admit it. Mm-hmm. Okay? Like, don't, don't walk through your life, like, pl- sitting on the fence, fooling and lying to yourself as if, like, oh, you're trying to be holy. Okay? If you want to be holy, do it. Get on board. Um, and if, if it, you don't, if you don't, at least admit it to yourself that you don't have, like, the will mm-hmm. to do something arduous and good in your life. Um, and just, like, all right. You know, like, that's, that's a place to start. And then maybe you can work on that. Um, but yeah. knowing yourself is, is very important. Being self-aware is very like important. If you say, you know what, I really just don't desire mm-hmm. this. It's, it's more than I, more, harder than I want. Okay. At least know that about yourself and you can work, you can work from there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like monthly confession, um, it's, it's something that if you're not, if you're, if you're not going once a month and there are times where I've realized like, man, I haven't been confession in like six weeks. All right, and so like I really have to convict myself of that and like go. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been times where it's like, oh, I've been trying to go to confession for like two weeks, and it's like, oh, I'm gonna go this day, and then like, oh, something comes up, right? You know, mm-hmm. like I get it, I've been there, um, and I st- it's something that I'm s- I still work on sometimes, but um, I know that monthly confession is a- is really a minimum. Um, I was just really convicted by what Father Donovan was telling us on the pilgrimage and how like, you know what, I do want to be holy. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm in on that. Like, sign me up. Um, so if I need to go to confession once a week, I'll do that for the rest of my life, if that's what it takes. Um, so, just something to think about. The sacraments are awesome. We should be we should there are avenues like of grace frequenting them. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right because it only grows us closer to our Lord and prepares us for the unity of, with Christ in heaven, which is where we're destined. And I want that. Oh, give it want. to me, baby. So. Uh, I had a little bit of French whiskey tonight. We finally had like a you know a decent one, a decent yeah French whiskey. Talked about Saint Charbel, one uh, again a saint that's not talked about in the Western Rite very often. Mm-mm. The the Maronites love him, big time. He's he's like it's like their Saint Benedict sort of you know or Aquinas or Aquinas yeah. So anyway, Saint Char 